Hello YouTube, Shiva's been announced a couple days from now. Vanille is nowhere to be seen. There's no Reddit threads because Vanille is not meta and no one cares about a character getting moved around that is not meta. However, they'll throw meltdowns about Tetzer. <laughs> Anywho, but we're here to talk about Jekt and Arden. If you've been a regular on my channel for a bit, you noticed I changed up the branding and got a new thumbnail. I'm trying to rebrand these videos as well. I can't deny reality as much longer. People are not looking for, they look for giant poll plans at the beginning of the month, but they're looking for a, a hard question of whether the character is good on release. And uh, why, why I'm willing to potentially clickbait on poll videos, but not here, I have no idea. So I have given into that. I'm now branding these videos before you poll. I think that kind of fits the name of my uh, what I've been trying to do a little bit better while being a little bit more attractive to people who aren't aware of my content. I got the idea from Kaching Mains in, uh, on Genshin. I'm sure they didn't come up with it as well, but I was looking at their video for some inspiration on reviewing units and I thought it was pretty cool. So I've been, as you know, I try to tweak my videos every time. Well, not every time, sometimes I phone it in, but uh, I've been continually trying to improve. I finally gave into the thumbnail game as well. I made templates for all my videos. This is more of an update in the beginning. Beginning. So, uh, tweaking the channel, see what I like doing, always trying to improve, always appreciate your feedback. But anyways, we're here to talk about Jekt and Divine Shiva and Arden. In this video, I'll be breaking information down quickly, I'll go over my thoughts and plans on upcoming characters and events, and I think it's important to give your plans because it puts skin in the game and potentially gives some perspective for how to go about things. I play both JP and Global, and I use my knowledge, research, and experience to help others. My goal is to help everyone make informed decisions based on their own roster. There's too many variables to consider for just straight up general advice, but I like to try and explain the nuance to help people arrive at their own conclusions. I want to hear what you all think, and I also want you to help me out in the algorithm, so go ahead and leave a comment on the video with your plans and your thoughts on the upcoming stuff uh, like the video be sure to subscribe to my channel you can also become a channel member uh support me one dollar for emotes and i'll always reply to your comments i do read all the comments so don't hesitate to hit me up with questions it's just i prioritize the members lastly check out the ranting hour my weekly stream where me and some others talk about the city and other stuff with no filter it's my favorite content to produce and i think it's also my most entertaining so if you're not watching already you're missing out so go ahead and check it i'm gonna plug it in the description and in the card Let's get started. We got two main characters to talk about, Jekt and Arden. We're going to talk about Jekt first. Jekt's role is a melee fire damage dealer. He gets consecutive turns on break, similar to Lightning, Zidane, Cloud of Darkness, you name it. There's a ton of those kinds of characters, and Jekt is one of them. His rework naturally adds more brave and HP attacks to his kit, but most notably, his skill 1 now resets the break status. So if they're already broken, you skill 1 them, and then he'll be able to abuse a consecutive turn whenever he likes. He also gets way more uses of his skills, so he can spam to his heart's extent. Skill 2, Jekt slash also becomes 20% splash. The LD attack is a quadruple AoE attack. If the enemy has brave, it will instant break them, but if they're already broken, it will not rebreak. This is for his crystal level 90 rework. Jack gets a free skill use after using the skill. Jack gets a new buff from this LD as well, and it gives him a few relevant offensive stats, attack up, HP damage of 20%. The big thing here is that he has the Aroha effect, where he only expends 70% of his brave when he attacks. If you're not aware, the way this mechanic works is say you spend 100 brave on an HP attack, you'll actually end up with 30 left instead of going straight to zero. This is great for attacks with multiple HP attacks and actually helps Jekt a ton because he has an HP conditional baked into his base kit. He has a conditional he needs to meet for his skills to be the plus versions and this did not age well so they decided to put a band-aid over it with this mechanic. The idea with his EX was to just eye brave regen to meet the conditional but now that regens are kind of dead because of battery reduction they band-aided it again with this. And he'll still largely suffer against HP damage shields or HP damage reduction on the bosses but if you compensate well enough he'll be fine. He also enchants himself with fire on all his skills. This indirectly buffs his damage, and whenever Jekt is attacking, similar to Vaughn, he will always be hitting fire weakness damage as an aura. This is not for the party like Bart's, it is completely selfish, but Jekt will always be hitting weakness, and this won't be a problem in any fights except for just Divine Ifrit, which absorbs fire, naturally. Lastly, he gets stolen brave damage up, which is, it's a mechanic that Golbez, Sephiroth, Tidus, and Ace have, where they deal a certain amount of brave damage, but they get more. What you need to know is he's doing an unconditional amount of more damage every time he attacks. His BT effect is extremely powerful, and assuming he's green, which he should be, you get 60% attack up, 100% brave damage up when you're attacking a broken target, 30% brave cap up when you're attacking a broken target, and brave regen by 40% of the max brave. This is obviously very good for Jekt because he can regen more and definitely hit his conditionals. On top of that, 100% brave damage up is nuts. I'm attack up behind it to overcome defenses because it's a relevant stat and you're good to go. The funniest part about Jekt's burst though is the finisher because he has the Aroha effect. He actually retains a lot of the brave afterwards. You can Jekt slash right afterwards and abuse that uh, retained brave. 
His calls aren't really worth mentioning. And he's got attack high armor plus with the even split between Brave and HP. Jack's strengths are that he's relatively easy to use in just straight up damage. He can guarantee consecutive turns all the time by using skill 1, but if you have the break available you can use a different skill. Otherwise you're probably going to want to just spam S1 so you can get the consecutive turns because it's just efficient. And with his BT his damage explodes and the while it is amazing for him, uh, the party can also benefit. Everyone benefits from 100% Brave damage up except Porum I guess. But don't be a will actually. He has a million things going for him to make him as self-sufficient as possible with the stolen brave gained up, always hidden weakness, HP damage up, etc. He's super plug and play. As for weaknesses, his damage is largely single target outside of hitting his LD or his BT finisher. He does have splash on skill 2 and EX, but it's not an AoE brave shave. If there's HP shields or HP damage reduction on the bosses or anything where Jack can't can guarantee that he has enough brave on his next turn then he'll lose damage because he won't be able to hit his conditionals this is largely band-aided by his ld but it is still possible to whiff this but if you support your damage dealers properly this really should not be an issue Jekt really doesn't have any problems i guess the biggest problem you could say is if you've already have a damage dealer aside i mean just in general like that that's a pretty uh wide roll so if you miss on Jekt or you don't go for his bt because you you do need to green him to make him probably reliable outside of synergy. I personally didn't get his BT in JP and then he was benched after his two week synergy. So he does have a high investment cost, but it's pretty easy. He, he has definitely a high floor. Like once, once you get him all the way built up, he's just gonna be pumping out a lot of damage without much thought behind it. For potential jack teams, he appreciates aura bots because he can, if you chain his turns together really quickly, he can burn through buffs. So drop enemies defense, buff his attack, buff his brave damage, and you're good to go. And so many characters do this that it's not even worth listing. Orin is a standout unit for jack specifically because Orin's debuff provides HP damage up and it increases melee brave damage dealt, which all, all of which jack does. Orin, jack together, and then a third can do content fairly well, provided you're meeting the orb. Just make sure you've got proper buffs behind jack and you're good to go. As for useful fights, there's nothing Jekt particularly shines in, uh, because he, he's just straight up damage, and the only the thing he contributes to fights is killing them before they can do anything dangerous. Obviously, he shines in Shiva because he's featured there, but even in the rest of his cycle, he's just there to kill things quickly. So nothing really standoutish in the future, but he's just good in general. He is a popular pick on Transcendent 6 because he was a recent BT plus damage dealer, not for any particular reason. But Transcendent 6 is annoying because it's got a lot of HP and it's got annoying mechanics, and the faster they die, the less you have to deal with, so therefore, object. Now let's talk about Arden. He is another melee damage dealer who gets free turn or free consecutive turns on breaks, I should say. His gimmick is using his LD drops his HP to zero and he enters the overkill state where he, even if he takes lethal HP damage, he won't die. Uh, Galuf has something similar. He also has a warp strike follow up after every single attack he does. It's unconditional as long as his buffs are up. For his rework, his skill one warp strike now has more brave hit to still, still a single target HP attack, but now the follow up is two brave plus HPs. It also has refund in the middle. His skill two also has a brave gain before before doing the brave attacks but still the same amount of brave attacks and he gets some refund after using it. His LD board did not get touched so it's just skill reworks to make him do a little bit more damage. Now for Arden's BT plus, uh, previously his base BT effect gave the party M brave up by a big amount 50% and M brave regen 50% of the M brave. That's a pretty fat regen although it does get taxed in Lufenia plus now uh, but now with the BT plus he gets party HP damage up 20% and he gets HP cap up 30% which is pretty good. It's actually competitive with like Yuna and twins. The issue here, however, is that Arden is not great at hitting those caps, nor does he help the party hit those caps, so it's a weird supporty type effect for someone so selfish. So let's pivot into the breakdown. Strengths wise, Arden is, again, melee damage. Uh, the unkillable gimmick is a gimmick at best, but it can be useful in certain situations where if you're trying to take less HP, if you know a nuke attack is coming and you can eat it with Arden, uh, then that's good, I guess. The situations where it's good are few and far in between, but it's something to note. On his BT+, plus, having that HP cap up is pretty good. If you have someone in the party who can help you hit that cap, Arden doesn't quite do it himself, but at least it's there. And the Embrave region on his BT+, plus is actually pretty good. It's just a lot of unconditional stuff on a damage dealer, which is an interesting twist. Twist. That's about where the strengths end, unfortunately, in my opinion. Weaknesses wise, uh, Arden's damage is just not that great. A single HP, well, okay, let me let me be fair. It's not a single HP attack on any of his skills because he does the double HP follow up, but all his skills are still one HP attack at the end of the day. So worst case scenario, if Arden does not land a break, he'll just be doing three HP attacks on his turns. On top of that, he can, unlike Jack, who just got a re-break on one of his skills, Arden can't guarantee that he's going to re-break on any of his skills unless he presses EX, which is I think is a 3 skill recast. He doesn't even take the best advantage of his own BT effect. Arden's kit seems to be all over the place and I have no issue just calling him straight up bad. 
I can cope into calling him viable because I know tons of people done runs, namely with Bartz alongside him, but I think that speaks more to Bartz's power than Arden, unfortunately. And last month, I called Vayne the worst BT Plus release so far, but I didn't say that he was bad, but I can just straight up say Arden's bad. The opportunity cost of using a green Arden over someone else's, I think, pretty large at this point. I know people are going to use him, and I know people have used him, and will be successful, but he definitely underperforms compared to everything around him. That um, Brave gain he gets on skill 2 is also especially insulting because if you're not bringing a battery, a Brave gain up unit, then it's just going to be kind of pathetic. And him having the Palom problem of not being able to proc his breaks outside of one skill, and well, until C90 Palom that is, it's just really weird. Again, they just did that for Jekt, why didn't Arden get it? As for potential teams alongside Arden, uh, Bartz. <laughs> Bartz is really good for him, just to boost his brave gains and help his brave damage out and HP damage. Their effects actually pair pretty nicely together, but at that point you're running an expensive double BT team. Arden does appreciate brave gain up as he's got a lot of refunds in his kit, but he also appreciates brave damage up. Defense down, etc. the works. Just all the normal ways to boost damage dealers output. I could see Porum working very well with him. Setzer not so much because Arden will burn through Setzer's buff provided he gets the consecutive turns. Core plus Arden gets wonky because Core will steal his breaks potentially. I could also see Garland's BT plus pairing nicely with Arden because he boosts Garland boosts the party's brave damage and Arden in turn gives him regen so all of uh, Garland's turns don't feel like duds when he starts at zero. As for useful fights, the one that comes to mind is Luyad, the FF12 weirdo. Uh, <laughs> There's a, the orb is to drop your HP with an attack, so Arden could potentially hit that four times at base and five times if you use his BT phase, and you could kill it fast enough, but at that point I'd rather just bring like maybe like Renault or Galif over Arden. I really don't think he's worth it at this point. I am praying they give him what Palom got on his C90, in which one of his skills, one or two of his skills, re-breaks. We can get that more consistent condition off. Now for the fight. Man, this is definitely one of the most notorious stages in the history of the game. Uh, at least it's not as ridiculous as the lighthouse in my opinion because while there are a lot of mechanics and a lot of things that can trip you up, uh, it's at least all choreogra choreographed, is that the right word? You know it's coming, it's just a lot to deal with. So for instance, uh, I'm going to go over some things, I might not get all of it, but uh, the, the way Shiva works is the there's the first Shiva that comes out and after like a certain HP threshold they put up a 1 million HP shield and get used to these 1 million HP shields because you're just going to see them a couple times. <laughs> Um, you gotta burn through that, uh, and then once you pass that, then the second phase starts. And then I think it's at like 80, 50, 30, I don't know the exact HP thresholds, but I know it's at least three times. Uh, they will just be like, alright, you're gonna get frozen, and then they force a break on you. And the really, what I'm really curious about is how Core will interact here. I don't know how Emperor and, um, Cry will interact here, or, or Barret. <laughs> Cope. Uh, with the, with the instant break condition, but they probably poke through it. Regardless, though, um, whenever they break you, they one of them gets a 1 million HP shield. There is an orb that is to deal fire damage, but it's actually not lethal when it goes off. So you're actually fairly okay. If you if you can take the hit and not get broken, you're good. Uh, there's some nasty debuffs along top of that. Warrior Light is really good here just because preventing as many breaks as possible. Orin, uh, because he's got the Brave Reduction down and the defense up for the party. Um, there's also a part where they're delay immune or not, not even delay immune, they reflect delay. So if you're trying to delay them three turns with Cloud of Darkness, just Cloud of Darkness gets three turns delayed. Although there's some Galaxy Brain setups around that, but Quist is, I believe, and I also, th I think I've gotten correct on this, but I'm just gonna say, double check your sources again. I believe Quistis can get around the delay immunity, but you're still gonna have to deal with them eventually. The reason why Ace is so popular here is because even while he's frozen, his traps will be going off, uh, this will help you get rid of the shields even faster, and he burnt, like, if anything, this is where I really woke up to Ace, because I was seeing how much damage he was doing while uh, he was I wasn't doing anything, <laughs> and those 1 million HP sh shields fell apart, so all the, I, I've been seeing a lot of thanks in the community for saying, like, oh yeah, Ace was definitely worth the hype, like, he didn't seem like, like he was that good, but he's been uh, killing it so far, so Ace, Ace Chads are gonna eat here. Um, otherwise, this is just kind of a slog of a fight. It took me a couple days in JP, and most JP players will tell you this fight's pretty nasty. Uh, with Jekt, you can just burn like burn through it. Uh, Jekt Orin is a good combo here. Uh, Ignis for the fire enchant, so you can hit weakness, because I believe one that once they go into their freeze thing state, they also have an ele element, absor element absorb. Words are hard. And lastly, they have like 200% HP damage. 
uh, brave damage reduction midair, I think. I don't know the exact numbers, but it makes it so Sid Reigns does like no damage in midair. This is a tough fight for him, but I know someone dedicated pulled it off. I'm probably going to see an Excalibur video <laughs> doing the same. Uh, so all that considered, uh, the best strategy, I think, is probably Warrior Light, Ace, and then Ignis, maybe? Especially if, you're, if your Ace is green. If not, the, the way I did it in JP was I did Ject for DPS, and I swapped him out for it. It was either Cod or Twins, and then I did a bunch of damage during Ace's burst phase. Ideally, you can skip between one of their phases, so you don't have to deal with as many freezes and burn them down huh, with fire as, as fast as possible. I'll leave it up to the galaxy brains to, oh yeah, Shulk is another good option here to counter their warps and all that good stuff, because Shulk is hard to break as well. In fact, I know of a non-BT run with just LD Ace, LD Porum, LD Shulk, and they were able to get to a fight eventually. So there's a lot of options here. I'm curious to see what some, some of the galaxy brains will be figuring out. Now for my plans on the event, I'm personally planning to ticket Jekt. Uh, hopefully I can get his BT here. If not, I'll, I'm pulling on a lot of the banners in the rest of the cycle. So that remains to be seen. I won't not I'm gonna be smart with my resources and wait. I do intend to green him eventually, just because I didn't do it in JP and I like the music too much and I want to blow things up. <laughs> uh, Otherworld is just a, such a great song. And for the fight, if I get Jack's BT, I'm gonna probably run him or in third on the team, maybe Ignis, I don't know for the debuff immunity. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably gonna do a similar Warrior Light Ace third team, maybe Ignis. My ace being green this time would help me definitely pump out a lot more damage. This fight and the next one are really going to be, the people are going to be like, wow, glad I got ace, for real. This is really when I realized his value. But this is Jekt. Uh, as for Arden, no, I already have his BT. Actually, I think I already have everything on his banner, so I wouldn't touch it regardless. But definitely not going to green him. I, he is definitely underwhelming in my eyes, not worth the limited resources. And again, check out my JP run of the fight. It took me a while, but I'm pretty proud of it. I'll go ahead and link that real quick. Now for my pull advice, and this is not for people who have already decided. If you have a favorite, you're dead set, by all means, do what you gotta do. But if you're on the fence, maybe take some of these things into consideration. As always, try to beat the fight first without pulling, whatever it's called to arms and discords, without any gaps in your play, and save yourself some resources, potentially. If you don't have Jack's call, I would definitely consider going for Jack because Jack plus Jack is insane value, especially if you get the BT eventually. That Jack call will take you miles. And it's very rare. Uh, huge, uh, I think, what is it, 50%? Brave damage taken and 30% defense. I don't know, or maybe I got that backwards. Regardless, it, numbers are good. It, it, you see that call in a lot of videos for a good reason. So if you're newer and you missed Jack previously, there is a reason to get him here. To the point where I potentially might even say, if you get Jack, Jack call early and you don't have it, you might might be worth pulling out of the banner. Jack with LD is passable for Divine Shiva and maybe for the other fights in this cycle, but if you've been playing for a couple months, you probably have enough damage to out damage LD Jack's pet, because if you're not going blue on him, that's also a damage loss. I think unless you're really trying to prove a point, Jekt LD will largely be benched out of his cycle, so if you can do all the content within without LD Jekt, I think it's worth not going for him. So if you're on the fence, it's, but also if you don't have, if you don't have any farming characters for Divine Shiva already, that's another reason to get him LD Jekt only, but if you're not, ch other, if you have enough characters to farm the boards and you can complete the content without him and you've exhausted everything, then uh, I think LD Jekt is safe to skip. I probably could have done Divine Shiva without LD Eject, but I did. I definitely could have farmed Shiva without him, so he's kind of a regret in my eyes in JP, just because I didn't end up going for the burst. If you're on the fence about greening him, if you've already got a lot of damage, then I think you're okay. Skipping Jekt again, I didn't have his BT in JP. And after the cycle ended, I saw people running him on Transcendent 6, but I was able to get through it with a LD Caius as my DPS. Um, and then after that, I really didn't feel like I missed out on much. He was definitely obviously very powerful, but I had enough damage rolls on my party to where I don't say that he w I really felt any FOMO from that. If you're struggling with turn counts and you need to blow stuff up, then that's a potential good green. I mean, he's, he's really easy to use. C90 is a couple months away, but Jekt, pursue, he, Jekt keeps going through it, even if he doesn't have the stat ups. And ultimately with greens, if you're not gonna use them, they're not a good green, but if you are gonna use them, they are a good green. As for Arden, I can't, <laughs> he's not in an acceptable state to where I can say anyone but like devoted fans should go for him and even then if you're a devoted fan maybe wait it out for something better uh he really is just in my opinion disappointing people will make him work but i don't think that makes him any less bad even if it was someone newer and they free pulled the bt for example i'd still say no don't do it i think he's just bad to the people running him yoshi pasta shout out to you bro
uh, have fun. I'm gonna be watching the runs regardless, but it ain't for me, and I don't think it's for many people either. But this video is way too long, so I'm gonna kill it here. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Again, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the way I'm rebranding and all that other stuff. Uh, Thanksgiving week, so videos might be spread out a bit. I don't know. I don't. I don't plan much <laughs> to my detriment. Anyway, so I'll catch you guys later. Peace.